May the 8th, 1945. We've heard over the radio that the end of the war in Europe has been declared, an answer to our prayers. Our group has moved backwards and forwards over previous months in many areas since we left France, with countless incidents of all kinds. More men sadly lost. On the day the Germans surrendered, we're in the town of Gok, on the border of Germany and Holland. Hopefully on our way home soon. There was a request today for volunteers to join a specialist unit being set up with a promise of two weeks leave at home afterwards for those joining the unit and that tempted me to volunteer. Will I never learn? A large motley group of volunteers gathered the next day and the commanding officer told us we'd been handpicked as the most experienced and more hardened soldiers to take part in an exciting very important but dangerous mission. Me experienced having just turned 19. Boarded a ship and assumed a homeward passage. But after six days at sea, it's dawned on us that the war in the Far East is still raging and the Japanese are still fighting like mad. So perhaps we're going there. Cold weather trench kits exchanged today for shorts and big hats, so we must be expecting warmer climates. Acclimatised and trained in parts of North Africa and Northern India. Secret equipment brought in by air and sea, and we've moved down by train to India. We've been told that we are part of a combined beach landing group and now moved off to Bombay to board a group of ships of all shapes and sizes, courtesy of the Navy. We joined men from the Gurkhas, Sikhs and Australian regiments. We set sail the next day and it was suggested we would land on the beaches of Japan. Then, a few days later, we heard that an atomic bomb had been dropped on Japan and shortly afterwards another one. News on 2nd of September 1945 that the Japanese have surrendered and a very loud cheer sounded through the ship with a sense of relief that the danger in our mission had gone. Unfortunately our cheers and relief were premature. We received orders a few days later for action stations. None of us knew our destination until the next day when the commanding officer spoke over the Tannoy system and told us we were on our way to land on the Johor Coastway, linking Malaya and Singapore. With the war over, it seemed like a simple job, and we all treated the prospect as a pleasant exercise. How wrong we were. The actual landing and mopping up operation in the area around the coast was an absolute nightmare. There were booby traps everywhere, with many hidden in the water, as the smaller boats landed on the beach and causeway. Hundreds of Japanese soldiers refused to surrender or had not received orders to do so. Some were kamikaze suicide men trained to take out as many people with them as possible when they died. We lost more good men there than our entire time in Europe and the enemy had supposedly surrendered. We've moved up country in Malaya and there are now virtually no further problems with the Japanese and we're taking residence in some shacks on the offshore island of Blakanamati, obviously main named as Behind Death. The seeds that have been firmly sown in my own mind that simple prayers and faith can overcome evil have many times proven true and each time I've made it through without major injury or death. I still have a lot to learn. We've been ordered to leave the island and move to Singapore into makeshift barracks in the ground of a posh hotel. No longer under canvas or in muddy trenches, but the heat and humidity is not what a Yorkshire boy is used to. Sorties to nearby islands continue to be fraught with danger and ambushes, although casualties are thankfully becoming less as the enemies are cleared. 
At last, August 1947, my magic date is upon the calendar. Boarded the troop ship Georgic in Singapore Harbour and set sail for England. Finally, on my way home, but contracted sepsis and malaria. Spent most of my time in sick bay and apparently two days at death door. But God has been leading me home. We docked at Liverpool and I was demobbed from the army because of my ill health. At the end of September 1947, aged just 21 years old, I have served and travelled in 22 different countries in the conflict of war. By the grace of God, I have survived everything that has been thrown at me. Perhaps I will always question why I was so lucky when so many of my fellow comrades never made it. Or perhaps it was just to tell their story for the sacrifice of their lives and the people that gave their all. We must remember them. <laughs>